What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We are continuing on in our series of scenario reviews for Blood Red Skies. So we are moving here to a one called Transport Hunt and somewhat similar to the Escort mission, uh, just involving uh, some larger aircraft and stuff too. So let's take a look and see what we got here. So we have interceptors and escorts to start off with here. So the player with the largest number of planes in their force is going to be the intercepting player. And if points or numbers of planes are equal and each player rolls a dice then basically for initiative, um, the higher roller is the uh, one that's doing the intercepting and has the option to use the numbers theater card as one of their theater card choices, which is uh, pretty nasty um, overall. So um, elements then... So uh, players must deploy a minimum of two elements, and they may deploy any number of additional elements as long as at least two aircraft are assigned to each element. And each element must entirely comprise planes from the same squadron, so things to keep in mind. Then we move on to deployment. So the escorting player begins by deploying one element anywhere on the tabletop, followed by the intercepting player deploys an element uh, basically more than 18 inches away from um, that escorting element. And then basically we continue on. Uh, so the escorting player deploys one element in high cover along any table edge. And then the intercepting player deploys one element in high cover also along any table edge. So uh, just depending on what is all chosen there, that can be um, part of the strategy here of setting up and trying to figure out where you're going to try and get your um, various elements um, and planes uh, just to sort of be in the best positions. But again, um, with the intercepting player going second there, so they can certainly try to um, match or um, more closely follow uh, what you are going to be doing. And really with the first step there, uh, 18 inches away is really not that far in this game, depending on the planes involved uh, either. So so then starting advantage level, um, pretty standard here. So roll a d6 for each plane on the tabletop. 1 to 2 is disadvantage, 3 to 4 is neutral, and 5 to 6 gets to start advantage. But it's the special rules of the scenario where things really do get interesting. So um, we'll start off here with the hunt. So transport aircraft are known to be in the area, but the intercepting aircraft will need to locate them. So if there are no transport aircraft present on the tabletop, intercepting pilots can use a special pilot action in this scenario called search. So you make a pilot skill test for the searching pilot, and if a success is rolled, transport aircraft have been spotted. So the following mods will apply. So multi-crew aircraft plus one, um, each previous search action this turn plus one. Radar support theater card plus one, searching over flat terrain plus one. Searching over ele elevated or undulating terrain minus one. So all kinds of things that go into that. And then when transport aircraft are spotted, the escorting player must deploy four to six engines worth of transport aircraft. So for example, two, three, um, two to three twin engines or uh, two tri-engines at points that are within 12 inches of the searching pilot and more than nine from any table edge. So, um, which is uh, pretty, pretty well manageable in most cases, um, but um, could get a little bit tricky depending on what all is on the table, but um, a really interesting way of um, setting that and um, really kind of thematic to just, you know, spotting, um, spotting things up in the clouds and all that um, and really having to search for where these things are. So really cool element to the game there. Then, um, note, you may use twin engine bombers if no transports are available as they were often adapted for the role. Uh, one or more, uh, or once one or more transport aircraft are spotted, no further search actions can be used until the spotted transports have either been shot down or escaped. And then the transports themselves, so they have a normal pilot skill of three. Um, they do begin disadvantaged and may not take pilot actions during this scenario. So due to their starting low altitude um, transports, which move into cloud, um, remain disadvantaged instead of becoming neutral, but they do remain untargetable while in clouds. Um, so pretty neat way and really um, something that you're going to probably want to um, aim for if you are uh, the person controlling them just to uh, um, try and uh, survive as long as you can with them. So search area. So both um, escorts and interceptors are spread out over a wide area and so can only be committed piece meal. So each player can commit a maximum of one high cover marker per turn onto the tabletop and both have additional restrictions um, on whether they can commit a marker. So the intercepting player may only commit a high cover marker if transports have been spotted by a successful search this turn. And the escorting player may only commit a high cover marker if no intercepting high cover markers remain uncommitted. So, um, so basically, I was kind of sending in reinforcements there at the end um, uh, 
once all the intercepting planes uh, essentially have become committed and on the tabletop there. Um, uncommitted high cover markers may be moved along the table edge as detailed in the high cover marker rules. So again, really just a um, great way of representing that, um, you know, these, these planes aren't like, you know, static and um, not moving. So it's a great way to represent things covering uh, these vast uh, distances and elevations and everything too. So then on to leaving the battle area. So transports that exit the table um, leave the scenario altogether. So no boom chits are inflicted uh, for planes lost this way. If an escort or interceptor leaves the table, um, it re-enters play on the following turn if it passes a maneuver test. And then redeploy, redeploy the plane anywhere along the edge it left from and roll for its starting advantage level. If the test is failed, however, the plane returns to base. Uh, one boom chit is inflicted on a squadron for each plane lost in this way. Then game length, um, so it continues until the intercepting squadrons or the escorting uh, squadrons are driven off by accumulated boom chits. So, um, so uh, potentially could go uh, somewhat quickly or really just last uh, for quite some time, just depending on what all is being accumulated. But victory, on the other hand, is achieved um, in the following way. So each aircraft shot down is worth the following. Escorts are one point apiece. Interceptors are worth two, and then uh, transports are actually worth three. So, if the transport was an adapted bomber, a bonus plus one victory point is earned for its higher speed and better defensive armament, so pretty cool there. And really, a great variation on the scenario if you just want to try that anyway, just to make it maybe more difficult or challenging, or just a little more interesting in general. And then if a transport survives the scenario, including by leaving the tabletop, the victory points are awarded to the escorting player, so you do have motivation to get your uh, transports off the table. Um, if a transport is shot down, the victory points are awarded to the intercepting player. Makes sense. And then finally, the player with the greatest total number of victory points at the end of the game is the winner. So could potentially be a pretty tight race there. And obviously, just in general, um, you know, the more escorts you can shoot down, the more you can kind of focus on the transports. But on the other hand, they'll be moving and trying to get off the table, too. So you kind of have to pick your poison there and um, just take the best opportunities uh, that you can. But, um, you know, with uh, the transports really starting at disadvantaged, um, if you can get some uh, great early uh, aggression there and get into good positions, um, you have a good chance of uh, maybe knocking a few down early. So, um, again, pretty fun scenario overall, and just another great example of what you can do in Blood Red Skies. Um, and it's not just, you know, um, basically just destroy the other side in every mission. So there's a lot of different things going on here. Um, so, um, you know, whether it's the escort mission that we covered previously or this transport hunt, again, just a great thematic way and really, um, you know, will play out in many different ways depending on the factions involved and whether, you know, you're doing early, mid or late war brings in all kinds of crazy things, you know, playing this with early war um, versions of like, let's say 109s and Spitfires is going to be way different than late war with um, you know, bringing in like ME262s and stuff if you're like intercepting with them. So um, certainly they can get around uh, the tabletop pretty damn fast. So again, really good stuff here from Warlord. Uh, another fun scenario um, worth trying out if you guys haven't. Um, and if you have, let us know in the comments, guys, what you think of the scenario. What have you, uh, what have your experiences been on both sides of it? Um, what have, uh, what forces have you brought, um, you know, um, have you played again early mid or late war and just you know what what kind of experiences have you had um let us know in the comments guys be happy to hear from you uh leave us a like and a subscribe if you haven't already and if you guys do want to support the channel check out the link in the description um if you guys head over to warlord there and pick anything up that comes back and helps support the channel a little bit um appreciate anybody that does um and hope you guys enjoyed again and thanks for stopping by we'll see you in the next one as we continue our blood red skies coverage here